Hey, Steve Basic Architect. Yeah, welcome back. Yeah, let's continue our conversation. Yeah, for those of you just joining us, this is our 1852 historic remodel. We're just gonna talk about a few things. You can see it's all grown in the before, or yeah, the long before when it was all grown in. If you haven't checked out the videos, I've done a, a few before this, uh, before and after, so you get to see, you know, how we started out like this and where we ended up, um, and uh, some of the more architectural features inside. Um, we talked a little bit about the interiors, um, the floor plans, et cetera, the building section, and what we tore down, and how drastic a renovation this was. But uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the water management. So we're just starting out back. Um, pretty high water table here um, in the yard and like I talked about earlier there's a whole bunch of things here that were no good and we didn't want them anymore so what do you do when you don't want something well yeah I'm a photo out of sync here I wanted to give you a quick shout or shot of uh, New England before we get to the photo I wanted. Sorry for that uh, little mental mix up on my part. But anyways, we'll recover and we'll adapt. I wanted to show you. So these, this is the kind of condition. Like I, I see a lot of these, you know, we could do remodeling jobs in New England exclusively if we wanted to. Um, we pick and choose because they are a time death trap, um, a time sink. I mean, they are just so involved, all kinds of little things. We were fortunate in this one, the decision was, hey, go in there and, you know, yank it all out. Um, but if you have to surgically remove stuff and like, are we keeping this sump pump here? What's happening on the curb here? You can see the stone wall here. There's evidence of water coming through pipes. Look at the support system for the sump pump hose, right? It's some clothesline there. And it's like, you know, evidence of water sitting there. Even though you have a sump pump, you know, this is probably sloping in that direction. You have evidence of water there and there. Um, just a whole bunch of things that are going on. And in this case here, um, very fortunate. The homeowner had the resources to say, Steve, make it all just go away and clean it up for me. And, uh, and we did that. And uh, so, like I was saying earlier, if you think something is no good and you want it to go away, then what do you do? Well, you make it go away. And we did. We had the excavator out there with his little thumb and he grabbed it. You know, the builder did a little sawzall action there so things could get pulled apart. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen a remodeling job like this kind of in action. It's not like this guy just shows up and starts ripping stuff off of the house. Um, there were a couple carpenters here on the day the excavator was. So they're inside and they're cutting floor joists and rafters and anything that's attached from the stuff we want to pull off to the stuff we want to keep. Um, so you can see excavator there. We're taking all of the bad stuff. You can see that that addition off there, all of the little canopy off the back, but that original 1852 timber frame, you can see the knee braces, the columns, and um, all of that stuff, the floor joists coming all the way out to uh, that balloon frame there. So all of that stayed uh, pretty much intact. And yeah, so that all got removed and then the hole got dug. Now, the thing about this hole is recognize this is basement floor for new basement. This is basement floor for old basement. And there's a delta here. It's probably, let's just say two feet. Doesn't really matter whether it's 22 inches or 24 inches or 26 inches. Um, 
roughly two feet there. And so one of the issues was we knew this basement was actually going to be, let's call, uh, you know, um, condition space. I'll just put a CS there. This was condition space, but uh, this is condition space, and I'll put an H. We'll call it habitable, meaning we want real ceiling height, real playroom, kind of downstairs rec room. And over here, we were okay staying in the, you know, I, I want to say this was probably like six foot nine to seven foot, probably depending on where you stood in the basement, whether you were standing on a curb or on slab or dirt. Um, but, uh, but we had to grab that and get this, you know, this height here was more like that nine foot basement. So you can see there's that two foot delta. So we actually went in and, you know, that sump pump photo, we took this and we just took this whole thing and just carved it out, pulled it out um, in here, took it all away. You can see we still have some of the um, fieldstone wall there. We couldn't get rid of it because the architecture historic commission, remember from the front of the house, they want to see the pretty stone wall. Um, and the original foundation. So notice <coughs> from that corner to that corner, everything we see from the street, we had to keep the stuff we didn't see from the street. We yanked it the hell out of there, as well as the fact that this particular area was going to get accessed from, uh, you know, the uh, existing house down into the new space there. So <clears throat> so how did we deal with that two foot delta? So the scheme I came up with was any water that happens in here, I need to capture and I need to bring it over, bring it down and get it somehow over to there. Right. So how do I do that? Um, and basically drain what we'll call the high basement into the low basement, right? So rather than treat it up there, I just drained it all down into what I'm calling the low basement. So we knew we're putting a, a new wall up here, bearing wall to carry the end of the house. You can see here's the old field stone wall there um, sitting on stones. And so the footing is somewhat aligned with that. And notice that we have the PVC pipes and they turn up and they turn up. And then we have this pipe, which would eventually turn down. And the same with this one, that one will go up to a pipe. And so these perforated perimeter drain pipes up above, that is, you know, this is all gonna be in stone here that water is going to get captured by that pipe, brought down and shuttled over, and then I'll have to deal with it here. And we'll talk about how we deal with that in a follow-up video. Um, but I really wanted to just talk about how we transferred and, uh, you know, thinking about it, because it did take me a little while to kind of come up with the scheme and the strategy as to how we were going to do this. And it's one thing to sit there and say, hey, it's pretty easy. We just got to get water from up here and we'll get it down there. Okay. But how do we do that and create nice finished space and make all of that stuff happen in concert with providing really good sound building science? And the other thing to remember is, you know, you have all of this wall around here, that field stone wall, that's bleeding water in. And how do I get this water that I'm accumulating on the wall down into this system so that this system can then transfer it to this system. And then this system takes it to yet another system. In that case, two systems, right? So you have you know, things I have to solve for in number one stage, <clears throat> stage two, stage three, and then stage four and four. <coughs> 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 
excuse me. So four stages to our water management strategy. And the thing that I found um, pretty easy is if I can come up with the general philosophy, like I just illustrated to you, right? Okay. We got water coming in through the wall. We got water coming up through the slab. Water is not going to come up through the slab anymore. So we can take that out. <clears throat> but we still have water coming through because we can't get rid of the field stone wall. So I have to solve for stage one, put the water into stage two, take stage two, drop that water down that two foot delta into stage three, and then I need to deal with it in stage three. So there's some, um, you know, very linear thinking about where does the raindrop go? And of course, um, if you saw some of the earlier videos on this, <coughs> we added downspouts and um, gutters to the original house that weren't on there. That was one of the concessions of us keeping the field stone. It's like, we'll keep the field stone. We got to treat with the water, but we can't be dumping, you know, gallons and gallons of water on this foundation system and then expecting it, um, to be a solution. So we needed that water to go away. So this four stage kind of philosophy, you know, one of the beauties of it is, is if I break it down and then I solve for them independently, I'm not trying to solve this big problem and get lost in it. I'm just solving for, okay, water comes through the wall. Where does it go? Obviously gravity is part of the solution, right? I'm going to do this in red. So we have stage one, water comes through the wall and I use gravity there. I just have to get it into that under slab situation here, right? And then once it's in there, I can get it to migrate and come down here and get it over to this system, right? So I solve for number two. That's pretty easy moving water underneath the slab. These risers were really somewhat key to this approach and getting that high water um, from stage two down to stage three and getting that over and solving for it there. And then once it's down here, it's pretty much like solving for a typical basement. So you can see here, we have the wall is cast. We have our footing there and then we have our wall and we're just going to do a wood framed bearing wall. Um, and you can see there's still a trough there. We got to put in our drain pipes that go. But again, that water at stage one goes down, fills up the under slab here, which is stage two. And then that water comes down and you can see we have our little outlets in our laterals there, and that comes down and becomes stage three. So that's how we got water from that high basement down to that lower basement. And um, it uh, really has been very effective. Um, you know, one of the beauties of taking everything out, we can actually grade that hard pan ground towards this uh, concrete little mini retaining wall here. So any water that we can successfully get into that under slab, it's gonna find the pipe, but understand all of this is getting backfilled with stone too, right? And it's all back there. So you have this big bed of stone that basically comes across here and goes down like that. Right, And so the water can travel through that bed of stone, get in this kind of trough of stone there, and then has a release there, as well as um, those perforated drain pipes. So, <clears throat> you know, that was very, very successful system there. Um, anyways, we're going to break there, and uh, we'll come back with a follow-up video and we'll show you how we solve for stages three, four, and we might even add stage five. We'll do a little talk about it um, 
as to uh, what we did there, but um, yeah, um, that's our water management solution for an 1852 whole house remodel with a uh, zero tolerance for water in the basement. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, hit that subscribe button. If you really did, tell all your friends about it. Go out, shout it from the rooftops. Um, I'm uh, here to share information. Um, you know, one of my mentors, uh, Joe Stebrick, um, you know, his, uh, one of my big takeaways from working with him for a number of years is the, you know, fact, you guys might have heard me say this before, but I'm going to say it again because it's really important. You know, if you're in a position where you have an abundance of information and such that you do, then you really, it's your responsibility to share that information, right? We're, we don't own anything as far as information. All this stuff that I'm talking about, water management, stage one, stage two, that's all born from somebody else's work that I'm adapting and kind of reshaping to solve my problems. I didn't invent water management. Um, I just see things and use, you know, the strategies that I was taught or the, the way to uh, problem solve um, these predicaments and break them down to uh, solve some problems. And then I'm sharing that with you, right? You know, Joe would say, we don't own it. We're curators of information. That's all. We do not own it. No, we do not. We don't own information. We curate it if we're doing our job and our responsibility. Anybody that gets a little information and a little solution and then holds their cards, you know, nice and close to their chest and doesn't share it really isn't doing any of us in the industry justice, right? You need to share that information. Get it out there so, uh, you know, things like this. The next person doing remodeling here saying, yeah, I remember when Steve did that video and, uh, you know, we're going to do a similar solution, but we're going to modify it to do this because our situation requires a slightly different solution. And, um, and yeah, and then that information just gets curated through time. And that's what we are. Information curators through time. How's that? Good way to end it. I'm Steve Basic Architect. Until next time, long live our buildings.